Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at LODs inside of Unreal Engine 5, specifically how we can have Unreal Engine 5 create them for us. So as you can see here, I've got this model of like a cable reel that I brought in to work with. And if we open that up, we can take a look at the triangle count. So if we look up here, this is currently costing us 25,000 triangles, which is a bit high for what is essentially just a, a level prop. So we can do some work on that to bring the triangle count down and more importantly to manage that with LOD. So at the moment, if we look up here, LOD auto, we only have the option of LOD zero, which means there are no other LODs here. So we need to look at what we can do to create some to get us going. So here we are in the static mesh editor and on the right hand side of the screen, we've got some things related to LOD. So I've just um, closed the Nanite settings because we're not using that. And then we're gonna to go to the LOD picker. And if you go to underneath the LOD settings, we've got LOD group. And this is where we can have Unreal Engine just create some LODs for us automatically. So, or automagically. So let's go from none and we can change this to whatever we want. Now I think this is actually going to be a large prop in the level. So it, it might be scaled up quite large. You could also try small prop. These all do slightly different things. They're just different presets, but we'll go for large prop. Now it's gonna give us a warning telling us this is going to overwrite any other LOD settings. If you had any that you'd brought in yourself, this would now overwrite them, but I don't. So I can just click on yes. It'll do a little bit of thinking. And now that's done, I can see that my triangle count has gone down to 12,500, which is nice. Uh, the LOD picker is still an auto, but now if we click on this, we can see that we have zero, one, two, and three different LODs. They always start at zero. So this is gonna be our nearest or our highest quality LOD. If we click on that, that's still the 25,000 that we started with, but now we can work our way through to LOD one, which is a 12,000, LOD two, which is costing us 6,000, and LOD three, which is just 3,000. As you can see, as we swap through each one, there's not much between them. Um, Unreal Engine does a really good job of keeping a good silhouette and having it look nice. And what we'll also do is we'll just zoom out and we'll see these change. So if we now go back to LOD Auto, up here it's telling us that we're on LOD 1. So let's just zoom in a little bit. So that's when we are on LOD 0. So when we're right on top of it, it's showing us all the triangles. Let's just slow my camera speed down. And we'll just pull out slowly. So that's where the transition between zero and one takes place. And you can hardly see that happening. Let's go out a bit further. That's between one and two happening again. There's a little bit here that we can see, but very little change. And then we zoom out a bit further and that gets us to LOD three. So that's how we can tell that these are changing. What I often do to see how the transitions are going as well is so I just change from lit here to wireframe. As you zoom in, you can actually see the wireframe changing. There you go. You can see the extra triangles are kind of popping in and how that affects your mesh. There we go. So that's all of them like that. We'll just go back to lit. You can, if you want, choose to have more or fewer LODs. So this setting here, number of LODs is set to four. That's zero, one, two, and three. But let's say that I wanted six. I could move that up to six, apply changes. It'll think about it again. There we go. And now we can see that we're currently on LOD three, which appears to be the same, but we can go all the way up to four, which gives us 1500 triangles. And now five, which gives us 700. And you can see that this actually looks quite ropey now up close. But again, let's just go back to auto and we'll see when that LOD kicks in and whether or not we can tell the difference. So let's pull out. So we're still on three. There's the change to four just happening there. I can't really see the difference in that transition. Let's see when it changes to five and if we can see that one. And this is actually happening at such a distance. It is visible, but really only just visible. And again, that's kind of the magic of LODs because these transitions should always happen at a large enough distance that you can't see them happening. But what if you're not happy with some of these LODs? So let's say that I'm not happy with this LOD five. I think that actually the number of triangles is too low and I'm not happy with it. Well, here's what we do. Over here, we can go from LOD auto to LOD five. It gives us some of the settings for it. 
and there's this reduction settings here. So we can open that up and that's now saying that it's given us 3.125% of the original number of triangles that we started with. But let's say I want to have 4%. So I can just type that number in there and then click on apply changes. So that's now going to take us from 784 triangles up to 1004. And that actually is now a much nicer silhouette than I had previously. So that's one thing you can do. And you can do that for any of your LODs. So if I decide that LOD, well, I can't do an LOD zero. I don't think I can anyway. Oh, no, I could. So I could make LOD zero lower if I wanted to. But generally, you don't want to do that because that's your original model. Um, but let's say that LOD one is too high for me. So let's just see what LOD one is. That's 12,000. We don't want 12,000. So we'll go into the reduction settings. It's saying 50% but I actually want this to be more like 30% and then we can just apply that change and then I would probably go through and reduce all the other ones to make a similar sort of change so that everything is lower than the one before it. One other setting that you might want to change so um, let me just reduce LOD5 right down so let's bring this down to 2% first so let's just apply that quickly Change my mind, let's try 1%. I want this to be really low. I kind of want it to look like ass because we need to try and disguise this by making it far away. Wow, that's holding up quite well. Let's try 0 0.5, Jesus. So this should only be about 125 triangles. Yeah, there you go. So now this looks very boxy. That's kind of what I was going for. So let's just have a look at where this change happens. So when it goes back up to four, oh, <laughs> That won't happen. I'm, I should be on a lot of auto. So we're currently looking at four. Let's just zoom right out and see where this transition takes place. And it should now be quite noticeable. <laughs> Do you know what? I think it turns out that Unreal Engine has really outsmarted me. I think it's now changing where this transition happens because I made it smaller, um, which was the point that I wanted to show you anyway. So we'll still go through it. So let's say that um, this transition starts closer in. So let's just speed this up a little bit. So let's say the transition happens here. So we're going to go um, where it says auto compute LOD distances. We'll turn that off. And then we're going to change to LOD 5. And let's say, so currently we've got the current screen size 0 0.64. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.64 here. 0 0.64 and then we'll just apply that change so I got that wrong it should be 0 0.064 which is where the current screen size is and then this should now change based on that distance so now let's go to LOD Auto and we can now see that transition is happening too close and this can happen to you and it can become really noticeable. So what we do is we work out roughly where we want that transition to take place. So let's now zoom out a little bit and say, I'm probably not going to be able to tell here, 0 0.03. So now we go back to 5. And we set this to 0 0.03. Like so. And then when we go back to auto, that's now where the transition is happening. It's much further away. And we can't tell once again. And as we get closer, those LODs work their way back up. So let's save that. We've now got some LOD data. Uh, there's just one other thing that I want to show you that you can do if you choose to. So here's that same asset in our map. And you can actually scroll down in your details panel here. And there is an LOD section. When I can find it, here it is. LOD. And what you can do is force an LOD model. So let's say that I want to force LOD 5. Or maybe LOD 6. There you go. That's Oh my goodness. That's what that one looks like. So you can force it to show 1 if you want to keep the polygon count low forever. Uh, we could set that to 4. Or what you can do instead. So we'll just put that back to 0. Or was that set to 1? No. Back to 0. There we go. What we can do is override the minimum LOD. So let's say that we never want this to use LOD zero. And in fact, we want this to always start at LOD two. What that now does is reduces the quality of that. And if we just go to um, show advanced and mesh edges, I can show you that changing. So 
Here's what it looks like now. And if we change that minimum LOD back, that's the triangles we started with. So we can set that to one. And what's good about this is the LOD system still works. So if we zoom out, you should be able to see that that's changing. There you go. But it won't show anything higher than that LOD. Let's now set that back to zero. And as we get really close up, we can see that it does make that difference. And that is everything I have to teach you about LODs today. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, you know you need to hit that thumbs up button, tell YouTube about my channel, give the algorithm all those good signals. Apologies for my recent hiatus in getting videos out. What was happening is I was giving myself projects that were too big, that were too daunting, and I was not really able to get into them. So I think what I need to do just for a while is some smaller scale videos, just get some out there, share my knowledge with the world, get back into the groove, and then hopefully those bigger projects won't seem quite so daunting. Anyways, all that's left for me to say is thanks for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next video, which shouldn't be too long. All right, bye.